Hi there, and welcome to this PowerShell.org tech session entitled Remote Variables. My name is Tim Warner, and I'm happy to be your instructor. The DevOps Collective hosts a free and open source book called The Big Book of PowerShell Gotchas. You can use the URL I've given on the slide, timw.info forward slash gotchas. Alternatively, you can find the book by using your favorite search engine. Anyway, this book consists of a number of short articles that outline common pitfalls in learning Windows PowerShell. Today we're covering the topic, Remote Variables. Our script file today is called variable.ps1. If you're new to these tech sessions, know that I give you the download link for the script at the conclusion of the presentation. Today we're concerned with the behavior of variables in PowerShell. Now let me tell you what I've got going on. I'll minimize my administrative Windows PowerShell ISE session, and we can see two File Explorer windows on my Windows 10 machine. On the left, you'll see the local file system. I have a folder called Scripts Local, in which I have a subfolder called Folder 1, and that contains both files and folders. It doesn't matter what they are. They're DSC resources. This is just an example. I have a remote machine on my network running Windows Server 2016 Technical Preview, on which I've created a scripts local folder, and I have a source folder here as well. The reason for this setup is I want to teach you how variables behave in local and remote PowerShell sessions. Note the first bit we have here. On lines 17 through 19, we define two variables, F1 and F2, that map to the Folder1 and Folder2 locations in the file system. Now, if you're thinking, Tim, you showed me this path up here, but you didn't show me the next one. That's the purpose of line 19, where I call copy item using the F1 variable as the source path. We're going to do that as a recursive copy to grab the subfolders as well. And for our destination path, we'll use F2. And we'll throw in verbose and force. Force performs a force overwrite. We select these lines, and we can either press F8 on the keyboard or click the Run Selection toolbar button. The verbose output came back with no errors, and if we minimize the ISC, we see we now have a folder 2, and the file copy was complete. You might think, well, what's the big deal, Tim? There's nothing really amazing going on here. And I guess you're right. If we, on line 32, run get variable against F1 and F2, we can see, as we would expect, that on our local computer's run space, in the memory allocated to this PowerShell ISC session, we have these two variables, and we can expect that those variables will be released from memory when we close out of the ISC. Things get interesting when we're doing remote operations. For instance, we have the same F1 and F2 variables. We know that these paths exist on my remote server 1. Why will this remote copy fail? You notice that I have in 28 and 29 two different ways to accomplish this with invoke command. We have on line 28 using the computer name, that's a string array parameter. Even better, we have a session parameter where we can use a stored PS session. That's what I have up here on line 23. We're defining a variable called session that stores a remote session to my server 1 machine. By default, it's going to use my current user credentials, and that's just fine in this case. Now let me select line 29 and hit Run Selection. We get an error out. Let's make sure that there's nothing wrong in our syntax. The script block is the same copy item statement that we've seen previously. But you'll notice that the red error says, cannot bind argument to parameter path because it is null. OK, well, how can we verify which systems have the F1 and F2 variables? We saw before we can run get variable against the local machine, and that's all well and good. When we run get variable F1, F2 against our server 1 remote machine, it comes back with two object not found messages. What is the lesson here? The lesson is when you use variables in your scripts, those variables will by default not be passed to remote systems, but will exist only in the local run space. There's two ways around it. On line 35, I have fix one, in which we include the variable definitions in the script block. Notice what's going on here. We're setting up our invoke command as we did before, but this time our variable definitions, F1 and F2, are inside the script block. Anything inside that script block, which actually includes line 39 as well, will be executed on the remote machine, so therefore these variables will exist on the remote machine. In fact, let me change them from F1 to F2 to R1 and R2 to denote a remote variable. I just want to differentiate them from the ones that exist on the local machine. We'll select these lines, 
and the verbose text comes back, we can again minimize and see that sure enough, the file copy completed successfully on the remote machine. So that's one way to do it. Fix two would be using the using variable designator. This is available in PowerShell v3 and later, and the syntax is dollar using colon, and we can force PowerShell to use a local variable in this case. So here we're doing the same invoke command, and inside the script block, our path is going to force use our local F1 path and force use the destination path. Now, of course, again, logic tells us those paths will have to exist on the remote machine, otherwise the script will break, but I think you get the idea. Let me select these lines, and once again, that completes just fine. Let's wrap up by clearing the screen with clear host and take a look at our variables. I'm gonna edit lines 32 and 33 to include R1 and R2. Let's do it locally. R2, yes, I guess I made a Star Wars joke without meaning to. Of course, we don't have R1 and R2 on the local session. And similarly, if we run it remotely, we have R1 and R2, but we don't have F1 or F2 on the remote machine. Now, for further learning, make sure that you've updated your local help. There are two conceptual help files that are relevant here. One is called About Remote Variables, and the other is called About Using. That using directive I found to be lightly documented, to put it in a friendly way, on the Internet. So that might be of particular use to you. Thank you so much for participating in this tech session. You can download the script from my website at timwarnertech.com forward slash variable dot zip. The videos for the Tech Session series are hosted at YouTube at PowerShell.org. The community site is, as expected, PowerShell.org. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions for improvement, etc., feel free to reach out via email, timothy-warner at pluralsite.com, or feel free to direct message me on Twitter. My handle is techtrainertim. Thanks again, and happy PowerShelling.